Hello, welcome to Vedial Vagaparai. In this video, we will be seeing a small portion of uh, nuclear chemistry. This particular video is based on IIT JE Advanced 2023 question. This video will be also useful for those who are taking UG TRB examination. Um, this is part of the syllabus wherein we study nuclear chemistry, the theory of nuclear reactions, alpha, beta and gamma rays, n by p ratio, etc. So, let us see the questions. List 1 shows different radioactive decay processes and list 2 provides pro possible emitted particles. Match each entry is in list 1 with an appropriate entry from list 2 and choose the correct answer. So, we are given two list or two columns and each column has a set of reaction, nuclear reaction and then list B shows the different types of uh, particles that are emitted from this particular reaction and we are asked to match them. So, before we go into the solving of this particular question, there are some basic fundamental uh, no notations and informations that we must understand about nuclear reactions. So, that we will see first and then we will, in, uh, we will look at the question, uh, how to solve this question. So, first and foremost, the notation and terms that we must know. The first and important notation that we will popularly or commonly come across in uh, nuclear reactions is the term isotopes. So, isotope is nothing but more uh, elements that have the same atomic number but different mass numbers like say for example, C12, C14. So, they are all isotopes that is carbon is the same element. So, the atomic number will be the same but the mass number will be different. So, in case of carbon 12, it is the mass number is 12. In case of carbon 14, the mass number will be 14. So, such molecules, sorry, such elements are called as isotopes. Then, when we are talking uh, in terms of nuclear chemistry, we, instead of calling them as elements, we call them as nuclei. So, that is a notation that is popularly used when we discuss about elements in case of uh, nuclear chemistry. So, now let us see this notation. So, this notation is a very popular and fundamental notation we would have come across uh, to designate an element. This we will see also in all periodic tables. Whenever we are talking about nuclear transformations, this is how the elements details are presented. So, in this particular case, we know pretty well X is the symbol of the element, A is the mass number and the subscript Z is the atomic number. So, this is how the elements are usually represented in chemistry, especially in case of nuclear uh, conversions. So, when we are talking about this A and Z, A is the mass number and Z is the atomic number. And sometimes some of the representations could have these two terms on opposite ends. But then always remember mass number is always written on top and uh, the atomic number is written at the bottom. So, now let us see the uh, next uh, next important assignments. So, instead of representing a, a nuclei like this, it can also be represented in words like this. Like say for example, carbon 14 can be represented as carbon hyphen 14. So, when we, this is the representation given, it goes without saying we are talking about uh, the carbon 14 isotope of car carbon atom wherein the atomic number will be 6. Always remember when we are writing an element symbol, then it means the atomic number will be the same. Only the mass number will be different. So, when the mass numbers are different, the, the element symbol will not change. Only when the atomic numbers become different, the element symbol will change. Because we know pretty well in our periodic table, the elements are arranged in order of atomic number. So, if you change the atomic number, it will automatically become another element. So, that is something we must always remember. If we remember that, we won't make mistakes. Another important thing that we must remember is the number of protons is equal to the atomic number. So, we know atomic numbers are going to be different and usually, generally, the number of protons is equal to the atomic number and the number of electrons. So, number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. So, when I say atomic number is 6, its number of protons is 6 and its number of electrons is also 6. So, this is how uh, 
an element is represented and recognized. Another important terminology that we must understand about uh, elements is uh, nucleons. So, we know pretty well when we, uh, when we studied uh, the structure of an atom, we know the atom has a nucleus and the nucleus has protons and neutrons. So, the, element, the entities that are there inside the nucleus are called as nucleons. So, inside the nucleus we have protons and neutrons and the electron is revolving around the nucleus. So, the sum of Z is atomic number, N is number of neutrons. So, the sum of protons and neutrons is equal to the atomic number, atomic mass or you say mass number. So, the mass number is equal to the sum of the protons and neutrons. So, this is also another important thing that we must remember. So, if in case we are having carbon 14 and we are having 6 as the atomic number, we know the number of neutrons will be 7. So, in isotope, the number of neutrons could be higher. This is something also we must remember. So, always remember when we are talking about isotopes, the isotopes will have the same atomic number, but their mass numbers will be different. Another important uh, or the most, dis, uh, you know, fundamental entity of nuclear chemistry itself is the neutron to proton ratio. So, we are talking about nucleons. So, the number of neutrons and the number of protons are the ones which decide the stability of the nucleus. So, or the stability of the element. So, the ratio of neutron to proton that is n by p will tell us whether a particular isotope, whether a particular element having a particular mass number and atomic number will be stable or not. If it is unstable, it will either lose a proton or a neutron or an electron and then become stable. That is all. So, whenever it is losing these uh, entities to become stable, then uh, the the element uh, um, uh, this such a conversion is called as a nuclear reaction or a nuclear conversion okay so let us see the equation so the equation is nothing but the conversion reaction which i just mentioned so let us uh, look at a conversion say for example in this case so this is u is uranium uranium's mass number is 238 and its atomic number is 92. So, when uranium is combining with helium, helium is uh, alpha particle, okay, is combining, this is a combining reaction, combining with helium and it is forming a product and it is giving out neutrons. So, we would want to know what is this element, how do we find this element? So, all like every reaction, we, where we have a balancing happening, the left hand side balances the right side. Likewise, in nuclear reactions also, the sum of the mass numbers on the left hand side must e be equal to the sum of the mass numbers on the right hand side. And the sum of atomic numbers on the left hand side must be equal to the sum of atomic numbers on the right hand side. Plus, of course, there could be some energy release which uh, may not uh, contribute to the number of uh, uh, numbers in the superscripts and the subscripts. So, let us take this example. So, in this particular example, we see uranium 2, 238 plus 4 will become um, <clears throat> will become 230 sorry 242 uh, but then there is a neutron also that is given out. So, but so that should be cancelled so that the sum answer or the net answer must be the same. So, that is the reason why we have shown here there is minus 1 and so the element must be 241. So, only when it is 241, you add this 1, it will become 242 and it will match with the uh, left hand side of the equation. Likewise, on the, uh, at the atomic number, you see it is 94. So, here because neutrons as atomic number is 0, so, this, uh, the atomic number of this element will also be 94 and be, when the element is 94, it is polonium. So, here you see here, um, this whenever there is a, uh, you know, uh, element that is being 
added especially when it is um, helium we know it is its atomic number is changing by two units that is something we must remember so this is how the product is written this is how an equation so unlike what i showed earlier here the representation is given diagonally so this is also one of the ways by which we will see nuclear reactions being represented so here i have listed out various uh, emissions that happen in a nuclear reaction and so this is this is the fundamental uh, you know entity for radioactivity so all elements would want to acquire stability so because they want to acquire stability either they will give away alpha particle or beta particle or gamma particle or positron or will do an electron capture all these are possible ways in which the elements will undergo change to become stable ultimately they would want to become stable so when an element is undergoing alpha decay we see it is giving away a helium nucleide and as a result we what happens will be there is a decrease in the mass number by 4 and decrease in atomic number by 2 this is an important finding that we must remember so whenever there is an alpha decay the atomic number will decrease by 2 and the mass number will decrease by 4 similarly in case of a beta decay beta decay is nothing but electron emission so electron has a charge of minus 1 and uh, it it has no mass so zero is the mass so what would happen will be the product form will be a one where the atomic number increases by one okay in case of alpha decay the atomic number decreases by two in case of beta decay the atomic number increases by one but there is no change in the mass number similarly in case of gamma decay a gamma decay is a neutral species it doesn't have any charge nor does it have any mass so it causes a complete excitation of the nucleus and this is also a, a very important radiative all of these are um, radioactive uh, decays and these radioactive decays can penetrate to different levels to different uh, or in different types of materials so that we will see in other videos but as of now what we must remember is any element naturally would give away all these kind of um, you know uh, decays or ra radiations to attain stability so that is why such species are called as radioactive elements so in a case of a gamma decay what we see is just a gamma radiation is given out and there is no change to the atomic number or mass number of the particle then we have two more uh, emissions and uh, one is called as a positron emission a positron emission is just an opposite of a beta decay beta decay has minus uh, charge whereas a positron has a positive charge and so its atomic number we will see here will be minus 1 here it is plus 1 in case of a positron it will be minus 1 and uh, next is an electron capture this electron capture is nothing but the inner orbit electron falls into the nucleus so because it falls into the nucleus the other outer electrons fall into the place vacant place and because it is falling into the vacant place some energy is released the energy that is released is in the form of x radiations so x ray emission is a classical example of a electron capture reaction again what we see here because it is an electron that is captured it is like a positron but it is not positron emission it is electron capture opposite but then the change to the atomic number will be the same like that of an electron capture so these are all the various uh, type of radiative changes that an element will undergo to acquire stability so let us see some examples so in case of an alpha decay we know helium is uh, the one that is given out and as a result we will get the resulting product so it will be so the atomic name number changes from 92 to 90 so there are uh, it it moves to 
groups before and this is a, a, a example of a displacement law this is also an important uh, law pertaining to nuclear chemistry in case of a beta decay we know electron is removed so uh, when we add up the number of uh, uh, at uh, protons sorry the uh, yes the number of protons or you can say atomic number we see the number become 6 so what happens here is um, what was uh, 6 has become 7 so one of the neutron will become proton and as a result an electron will be released in case of a beta decay then in case of a gamma decay we see there is no change to the atomic nor mass uh, numbers but then the molecule sorry the element by itself will get excited and as a result it will emit gamma radiations so gamma radiation are also highly penetrating radiations so among the three types of radiation the gamma radiation is the most penetrating radiation while the alpha because it is heavy is the least penetrating because these do not have mass they can penetrate better then coming to positron again we see the we when you add up these uh, two uh, atomic numbers and in and the positrons uh, positive value it adds up to the left hand side so it is just the opposite of a beta decay so in the beta decay what we see is a neutron becomes a proton and so an electron is released whereas here an electron uh, proton becomes a neutron so the number of protons decreases and so a positron is emitted the last thing is the electron capture so this is all emissions the radiations are coming out here in case of electron capture the radiate the electron is falling into the nucleus so because it has fallen into the nucleus we have changes happening and x radiations are formed so this is how all the different types of radiations occur and that result in the different kind of products and changes to the atomic and mass numbers is something which we have to remember when we are looking at these conversions so now let us take an example of this conversion so how do i uh, calculate how do i find out whether what kind of radiation has occurred in a particular conversion so in the earlier examples i clearly showed you uh, the reactants and the products but now I am just giving you a reactant and product and I am asking you what are the other kind of radio radiations that are being released or particles that are being released from during this nuclear conversion. So what are the steps we can do for this? So first and foremost let us assume that there are x and y number of alpha and beta particles also that are emitted with this particular reaction. So let us consider something like this because we know any radi radi radiative change will be associated with alpha, beta and gamma radiation. So, uh, we are assuming that all the three radiations are happening. Gamma radiation is ignored because it is no change to the mass and mass number and atomic numbers. So, next first let us compare the changes to the mass number. So, when we compare the changes to the mass number, we see that 238 is equal to 234 plus 4 into x 4x plus 0 so ultimately x value will be equal to 0 similarly when you compare the atomic numbers we see the left hand side 92 is equal to 91 plus 2x minus 1 which is nothing but y is equal to 1 so now from this simplified calculation we get to know the number of alpha particle is 1 and number of beta particle is 1. So, the total uh, equation can be told as this particular conversion results along with 1 alpha particle and 1 beta particle. So, this is the answer for this particular conversion. So, now we will see for the others. I had given this uh, as the instance, the first uh, uh, conversion as an example. Now, let us see the second conversion. So, when I show the second conversion, we, we have to just add alpha particle and then we have to add beta particle. So, beta, so and then we have to to total up and, and find out how many are formed. So, in this particular uh, Q conversion, lead, in conversion of lead, you see two th 214 um, 
definitely if it is uh, 214 on right hand side it must be only one alpha particle and so this is balanced now when we add the atomic numbers we see already both cases it is he2 so the two of the alpha particle has to be neutralized by two electrons so uh, it is two electrons it should be two electrons only then it will be a balanced one so q must give one alpha particle and two beta particle and then coming to the next category again we will add up alpha particle and then electron so uh, we keep uh, we uh, we see how it could be done again 10 minus 6 is uh, 4 so 6 and 4 is matched up so definitely it must be only one alpha particle and uh, if it is only one alpha particle the total atomic number adds to 84 but then it is only 81 so it has to be 3 minus only then it will become 81 the next category again helium 4 and 4 plus the electron so here again uh, when we see the conversion again the difference in the mass number is only 4 so definitely it is only one alpha particle but the diff uh, but when we see uh, when we add up the values it is coming to only uh, 90 so but then the answer here atomic number is 91 so we have to add one so it is not an electron here but the positron in the third case so s has is due to 1 alpha and 1 beta particle then 3 beta particle is due to r and then we have 2 electrons so 2 beta particles and 1 alpha particle is due to q and then we have 1 alpha and 1 beta particle which is due to p so the answer is a p is 4 q is 3 r is 2 and s is 1 so this is how we solve this particular question hope you understood thank you like and subscribe